My budget home theater setup is always evolving closer to its final form. Most recently, I replaced the front left and right speakers with these vintage Sony SSTL5s I got on Facebook Marketplace. And it's reached a point where I'm completely happy with every component, except the subwoofer. I picked up this Philips SW965 at Goodwill for $10 about eight years ago. It's not terrible, but it can only make sound down to about 40 hertz, which is about the same as the Sony transmission line speakers, so it really needs upgrading. So today, together with the help of this little fellow, I'm going to build my own subwoofer from scratch. Let's get to it. Starting off with the components, for the driver itself, I chose this 12 inch Dayton Audio Ultimax subwoofer, which I got a very good deal on on Cyber Monday. This should hopefully be good enough that I won't need to upgrade again for quite a while. Before we get started though, there is something that needs to be taken care of. My dad has never changed the blade on his circular saw since he got it around 2004. It is completely and utterly done for. So we'll put the old blade where it belongs, and I made a quick trip to the hardware store to get him a nice new Diablo blade, which cut through the 3 quarter inch MDF I'm making the subwoofer cabinet out of like a hot knife through butter. A table saw would have worked better for this, but since we don't have one I had to make do. Once everything was cut, it was time for assembly. The front panel was probably the most complex out of them all, I didn't think 3 quarters of an inch would be strong enough, so I cut two panels the same size and glued them together. Once they were dry, we cut the hole for the subwoofer with a saber saw, then used a router to make a recession of a larger diameter so that the bezel of the subwoofer would be flush with the front of the cabinet. The box was the easy part, just lots of flat panels to glue together, with another strip of MDF at the corners to increase the strength, and a cross brace in the middle. The completed sub will be 16 inches by 19 inches by 21 inches. For the edges, I got this 3 quarter inch quarter round molding to place in the gaps and give a nice finished edge. Since my cuts weren't exactly flawless, I filled the gaps with this DAP wood filler. And folks, let me tell you, this stuff is vile. It smells atrocious, and the chemicals in it actually melted through my rubber gloves. That said, it did work well and after going over the whole cabinet with a DA sander, it was ready for paint. The next step was to stuff it, literally. Most people online use something called polyfill, which basically looks like quilt batting, but I didn't have any of that. What I did have was rock wool, and a lot of it left over from a previous project, so I figured I'd use that. Will it perform exactly like polyfill? Probably not. Is it good enough for me? Absolutely. I cut it to size and laid it in. Now, this might be controversial, but when it comes to painting speakers, I prefer to roll them with a nice quality eggshell interior paint. The rolling leaves a slight texture that I think looks pretty nice, and it tends to be more durable because the coat is much thicker than spray paint. This is Bear's Premium Plus paint in the color FD3. It's the same stuff on my Sony towers, and I really like it. Paint is always very satisfying to apply, and that was no exception here. It ended up taking three coats to completely cover the MDF, with a light sanding in between coats one and two. For the amplifier, I chose a young 100 watt Class D plate amp. I plan to upgrade to a DSP amp in the future, but since I've never chosen a subwoofer amp before, I thought this would make for a good starting point of reference for how powerful 100 watts actually sounds. I soldered the plate amp wires to the driver wires, then dropped it in and bolted it down. And with that, it is complete. I'll build a speaker grill at some point in the future, but for now I'll just enjoy the look of that beautiful woven cone. There's no good way for me to demo this on YouTube, but after using it for a few weeks I can safely say that it did make a huge improvement to my little home theater. All totaled, it cost around $300 to build, and it wasn't too difficult if you have some basic woodworking skills. If you don't have woodworking skills or the tools and space required to do this, you can buy CNC pre-cut kits with all the pieces to build basically the same thing, and all you'll have to do is assemble and paint it. Overall, it was a fun DIY project. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit like, get subscribed, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. 
and I will see you guys in the next one.